Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 please. Reading from the NIV. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 4, the first part. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises. Let me tell you this. Whatever you need for life already belongs to you. Already has been given to you. Read again verse 3 please. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. You see, his, God, his divine power has already given you everything you need for life and godliness. So I am saying to you, whatever you need for life and godliness, you know, is already yours. It already belongs to you. It has already been given to you. The question is, how long are you going to wait to possess it? May I say to you today, in the name of Jesus, you can claim what is yours in Christ now? You can claim what God has given you in Christ now. Everybody lift your voice and say, I claim what God has given for me right now in Christ. I'm not going to wait for tomorrow, right? Did you, did you make up your mind? I'm not going to wait for tomorrow. I'm going to make it now. If God has said, take it, I'm taking it now. All right? Now, how do you possess your land? You claim it by faith, right? You claim it by faith. All right. For example, you know, if you want healing, if you need healing, you know, take these steps. Number one, if you need healing, now this is for everything. I'm just giving you, you know, three simple steps. But you can, I'm just using healing as an example, but you can use it for financial provision, for blessings, for breakthrough, for peace, for joy, for health, for strength, whatever you need it for, all right? All right. If you need healing, take these steps. Number one, say, I claim the money, or rather, I claim the healing I need as a child of God according to his promises. So how do you possess your land? How do you take what is yours? Yes, yes, it. By faith, you say. You see, you cannot have faith. You have to say with your faith. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say, uh, I claim the healing that I need as a child of God according to his promises. All right, that's the first thing you do. Number two, number two, you say, Satan, take your hands off my healing or my health. That's the second thing you do. That's the second step you take. You say to the devil, take your hands off my health or healing. All right, number three. Number three, you got to say, angels, your ministering spirits, go and cause to come to me my healing. Go and cause my healing to come to me. That's how it is. You say to the angels, which are the ministering spirits, you know, they minister to you, to the heads of salvation. You tell them, go and cause my healing to come to me. That's how you possess your land. You claim it by faith. And claiming has to do with verbal confession. Now, now, now please listen. I am not a name it, claim it preacher. I am not a blab it, grab it preacher. No, I'm not that kind of a preacher. I am saying what God has promised you in Christ, you can take it. I'm not just saying, go stand by somebody's, you know, palatial house and say, Father, I command you to give it to me from them. Don't do that. All right? Name it, claim it won't work. What do I mean? I mean when I, when the word of God assures me that it's mine and God has promised me, then I claim it. Amen? Amen? I claim it. I say it's mine. I take it now as a child of God according to his promises. Because I know a lot of this teaching is around, you know, name it and claim it. And so people are going, you know, naming and claiming of somebody else's, you know, Mercedes. Saying, Lord, by tomorrow morning, I want it in my garage. I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh-oh. Don't you know the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's goods, which means the neighbor's car. <laughs> Be careful what you claim. Write this down, please. Aggressive faith commands what rightfully belongs to you to come to you. 
Aggressive faith commands what rightfully belongs to you to come to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's big time. Aggressive faith commands what rightfully belongs to you to come to you. It calls into existence the things that do not exist. That's aggressive faith. Aggressive faith is the God kind of faith. Because he's the God who calls those things which are not as though they were. And the Bible is saying aggressive faith calls into existence the things that do not exist. Glory to God. Aggressive faith commands things desired from out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. Let me say that again. Aggressive faith commands things desired from out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. That's exactly what the centurion did in Matthew's gospel chapter 8 verses 8 to 10. He said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Right? In other words, he was telling Jesus, please listen. In other words, he was telling Jesus, your word is the only evidence I need. That's, that's what he was saying in essence. Your word is the only evidence I need. My brothers and sisters, Jesus took notice of this kind of faith. And if you have that kind of faith today, Jesus will take notice of you. Write this down, please. It's very powerful. Write this principle down. The greatest faith is faith in God's word and its authority alone. Very, very important. The greatest faith is faith in God's word and its authority alone. Hallelujah. It does not demand any physical evidence. It does not say, Lord, show me, then I'll believe. If I see it, then I'll believe it. Because if you see it, you don't need to believe it. You have, you have it. Amen? As long as we don't see it, only we believe it. So you see, the centurion was not asking, Lord, if I see my servant heal, then I'll believe. No. He said, only say the word, speak the word only, and I know my servant will be healed. What faith? Jesus commended him. The Bible says Jesus was astonished. My friend, I tell you, it's not easy to astonish Jesus. But this man did. Because the greatest faith is faith in God's word and the authority of God's word alone. It does not ask for any other evidence. It says, Lord, if you said it, that's it. That settles it. I believe it. No room for debate. No room for discussion. But what about so and so? He didn't get it. That's not my problem. If God said it, he's a God of his word. Hello? I'm not going to use my head. No. No. I'm going to use my heart and believe. Because once I know the word of God is true, I don't have to worry about it at all. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Because the word of God says it. He says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God to Martha. That's true. If, if you believe, you'll see it, my friend. Believe me, you will see it. I tell you that statement, you got to go back and work it. I tell you, you know, because of time, I give statements, but I'm telling you, each statement you can preach for about, you know, 10 to 12 weeks if you'll just work with it. If you just dig deeper into, into each of those statements, I'm telling you, you will come up with profound revelations on how to receive your miracle and your blessing from God. Have faith only in God's word and its authority. I'm telling you, there's no greater faith than that. That kind of faith will never demand a physical evidence. Never seek a sign. 
Never. It will never seek a sign. Lord, if you do this, then I'll, then I'll believe. No, no, no. It says, Lord, you said it. That's it. I believe it. That settles it. Glory to God. All right. Here's another one. Aggressive faith is not afraid to make a faith demand. All right, I'll say it again. Aggressive faith is not afraid to make a faith demand on your covenant and expect to receive what already belongs to you. Or what is already yours, whichever way you want. Aggressive faith is not afraid to make a faith demand on your covenant and expect to receive what is already yours. That's aggressive faith. It is never afraid to make a faith demand and expect to receive what is already yours. Are you ready for this? God will always supply as long as there is a demand. Oh my God. What am I saying? I am saying this. If there is a law of demand, there will be a law of supply. If there is a law of demand, there, is, there will be a law of supply. And let me tell you this. God will always supply as long as there is a demand. His supply will stop when the demand stops. Take the, the, you know, the prophet's widow who went to Elisha saying, pleading with, you know, with him to save her two sons from being taken by the creditors. Right? He said, what do you have in your house? She said, uh, she said nothing but a little oil. That's all she said. I have nothing but a little oil. He said, all right, go gather all the vessels that you can borrow. Now she's already, you know, lock, stock and battle in debt because she had already borrowed. And he's telling her to do the same thing again. Go borrow all the vessels, empty vessels you can. And so she borrowed all the empty vessels she got. And then he said, lock your doors and start to pour that oil into all the vessels. And she did. And you know when the oil stopped? When the demand ceased. When there was no more demand, the supply ceased. That's why I said, God will always supply as long as there is a demand. I wish you're getting these things, church. As long as you can place a demand on God's word, I'm telling you, he's going to fill you. He's going to fill you. I said, he's going to fill you. He's going to supply everything that you need. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I love what Sister Gloria Copeland said, and I want to quote what she said. Powerful it is. She said, and I quote, Take it when you pray. Then you can drive it, live in it, and spend it. Powerful, isn't it? She said, take it when you pray. Then you can drive in it, live in it, and spend it. Okay. Let me break it up. Take it when you pray. Then you can drive in it if it's a car. You can live in it if it's a house. You can spend it if it's money. She says, your taking should be done in your prayer. Because if you don't take it in prayer, you will not drive it, you will not live in it, or you will not spend it. In other words, you will not enjoy it. So she says, your victory is won in your prayer. Once you settle it and take it in your prayer, well, brother, you know, I prayed. Now I'm just waiting on God. That's not a taking prayer. That's a wishful prayer. I prayed. Now I'm waiting. Well, I've taken it in, in prayer. I'm waiting for the manifestation. That's different. I've taken it in prayer. I'm waiting to drive it now. Very soon I'll drive it. Very soon I'll live in it. Very soon I'll possess it. You see, when you take it in prayer, you will always drive it live in it, and enjoy it. 
So what have we talked about? Five things. Number one, when we get aggressive. All right? Number two, I said, when we, you know, seize. You know, when we seize God's word and won't let go of the word of God. So, number two, the second characteristic, when you won't let go of the word of God. Number three, when you refuse to take no for an answer. Number four, you know, when you are fully persuaded or convinced. And number five, when you take it, you develop an aggressive bulldog faith. When you have these five things, you develop a bulldog faith. And bulldog faith will defeat the enemy every time. Aggressive bulldog faith will defeat the enemy every time. Amen? You will reap the harvest. You will reap a harvest if you don't let go of your aggressive bulldog faith. Glory to God. And here's my last sentence. Here's my last sentence. You can live and walk in everything God's covenant promises. You can live and walk in everything God's covenant promises. Just don't let go. Turn to your neighbor and say, just don't let go. Just don't let go. Whatever happens, don't let go. Amen? That's all you got to do. Don't let go. And I'm telling you, your miracle will happen. Amen? Let's stop there and go to the Lord's table.